Welcome to WrestleRadia! I should have went down to Tampa this year. I had my poncho ready. My umbrella was ready to roll. Could have had a good time down there, huh? Splishing and splashing away in the rain. Yeah! We'll see if WWE <laughs> issues an edict after this that says, no more outdoor WrestleManias where you don't have a retractable roof. Yikes. It's going to went sideways very quickly to those of you that were wondering, you know, why didn't they plan better for this? Did you watch the last few weeks build up to WrestleMania? You're really asking about WWE and their planning of things? Is that really a thing right now? Seriously? Come on. You've got to know better than that. So it shouldn't have been a surprise that we had multiple weather issues. Saturday. Lightning at one point made the fans vacate the arena for a little bit. They came back and just as seems like everything is finally getting ready to go and you're ready to move on from that dreadful ass pre-show. You're going to get right into the ass kicking action. The WWE Championship matches. Now we <laughs> got a weather delay. And seeing Michael Cole and Joe and the fucking ponchos was perfect. They should have kept them all night long as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you know, and it was giving me, after a few minutes of seeing all the unscripted promos, it was giving me some of those first ever episode of TNA vibes. Like shit goes wrong and you got to improvise. And it's like, hey, let's do 15 or 20 minutes of random ass promos with everybody. Hell, if anything, it was a positive. It was an asset for this show. Because you got to see people be more natural. You got to see some of the people that have the talents and the ones that don't. <laughs> I was thinking, man, this is, this is going to be one tonight. And this is going to be one all weekend. Like, this is the start. It's a year, a month, and a day. A year, a month, and a day since you had any fans live in attendance at a WWE event. And this is what you come back to. Woo! I'm looking too good. And then you started off after the weather delay. You said, now we're going to get into the action. Yeah, except we're going to get Titus O'Neil and Hulk Hogan. Hopefully Titus O'Neil got double pay for having to stand up there next to Hulk. Oh, God. <laughs> you couldn't have just let Titus be the host. I'm just saying. Come on now. I mean, Hogan was already with... In, inducted with the NWO stuff from last year. You were having him there. So you could have done that. That would have been sufficient. Could have let Titus just do it on his own. But then you're like, okay, finally. And then you get a fucking video package before the McIntyre Lashley match. Like, that's the last thing you needed to see. You know what I mean? Good Lord Christ Almighty. But at least, fortunately enough, after the one delay, the weather held out. And we were able to actually get to WrestleMania. And let me go ahead and get serious for just a few moments here. I don't need the poncho or the umbrella because I'm inside. Some of you are going to say to yourselves, well, why did you open up an umbrella in your house? Uh, let's be clear. It's not like the luck for me can necessarily get a whole lot worse anyways. So I'm tempting fate. I dare you. What are you going to do? But superstitions are stupid anyways. But man, what wasn't stupid was WrestleMania 37 Night 1. WrestleMania delivered significantly more than I expected. And not just because the build-up to this was piss poor and lackluster. Not just because the expectations were set really low. But the simple fact of the matter is, this was a pretty damn good show. And starting it off with the WWE Championship... Like, not ideal, but it really worked here. It's Drew, it's Lashley. This felt like two alpha badass males brawling and fighting with each other. Shit had significance and high impact and everything like that. Both of these guys look like a million damn bucks. And most importantly of all, most importantly of all, Bobby Lashley walked into WrestleMania as the WWE Champion. And he walked out of WrestleMania, the WWE Champion. And even the way they had Drew do it here, 
He did the job, sure, but he didn't tap, he didn't quit, he didn't get pinned. He got submitted to the point that he faded out and the ref had to call it. Like, that's perfect! It was almost like it was too good of an opener to Mania because it made me really worry about what the rest of the night was going to be and it made me really worried about that main event and it shouldn't have been, to be clear. But I want to say this about this match. It was a couple of years ago, Kofi Mania running wild was great, fantastic, and all of that. But this, to me, is more of a sign of true progress than what happened two years ago. Because the Kofi thing, you kind of put yourself into a spot where that was going to happen. It was the obvious thing. You couldn't not do it. And also, the champion at the time was Daniel Bryan, who's somebody that the company likes and respects, but he's not one of those dudes. Here, Bobby Lashley had already gotten his WWE Championship moment. He had already won on Raw. Now he's going into WrestleMania, the champion as a black man, going up against the chosen one, Drew McIntyre, that everybody was afraid was going to win here so he could get his moment in front of the fans. And the WWE had their black WWE champion walk into WrestleMania, the champ, and walk out of WrestleMania, the champ. To me, that's way more progress than just having Kofi win when it's so freaking obvious a couple of years ago. There were so many things pointing to they were going to go in a different direction, and they did it, and it totally worked. Both guys are better off for it, and the Bobby Lashley, the almighty era continues. Like, who could complain? Certainly some of you, but fuck you. This is really good. And now that Drew did the job and lost at Mania, we good. We good. What wasn't good, though, was that tag team turmoil match. Like, I'm really happy Billy Kay got a WrestleMania match. Her ass deserved it. She earned it. It was really good to see Naomi. But they didn't have to have Billy Kay pin Naomi. Naomi deserved better than this. God, this fucking match was terrible. You talk about low lights on the show. This, this, this was it. Infinitely more cringeworthy than the unscripted, thrown together frickin' promos during the weather delay. God, this felt so bad. And you all knew the whole time it was just setting up to Natalia and Tamina. Like at one point in time, Tamina had that look on her face. Like, am I going to have to kill a white bitch? And I'm sure her dad, indeed, was looking up from below, burning, burning with pride inside. And say, way to go, brother. And as far as Natalia, I'll say this. Thank God we don't assign a dollar value to her match. Because we'd all be fucking broke as shit come Monday. Probably have to go declare Chapter 7 bankruptcy or get some debt consolidation help. This was really, really bad. Like, this is a match you say, this should have been on SmackDown on Friday. Because it should have. It absolutely should have. This was the drizzling shits. Even shittier than Seth Rollins and his drip. Seth Rollins, mania killer. Not on this night, though. The match between him and Cesaro was certainly good and more than passable. And most importantly of all, this was about Cesaro. This is his first one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania. This is about him giving him the shine, giving him the spotlight, giving him his WrestleMania moment. And they did it. And it worked. And the match was good. And most importantly of all, Cesaro looked great in the process. Now, do I expect them to follow up with this and really do anything with it? No. But in its own isolated bubble, for one match, one moment, one night, this was really damn good. So it was exactly what the hell it needed to be and nothing less. And I was fine with that. The Raw Tag Team Championship, I almost, I'm digging the vibe of the Vestas the, after you've got your black Lee jeans at Walmart, you go and you say, well, that's the only thing they got left for a big motherfucker like me, and I'm going to wear it to the ring at WrestleMania. That shit worked. I was saying the whole time, please don't be Kali. Please don't be Kali. Please don't be Kali. And he's not. And props to the New Day for kind of working heelish a little bit here because Vince wants to get almost over. He's looking at him and he says, Fear God! There's my black diesel right there. Vincey loves it. And I'm cool with that. Like, we need guys like Amos in WWE. 
We need those big Goliaths, those big monsters, those big giants. And it absolutely fucking worked here. So it was a solid tag team match. Almost looked great. He was the one thing we're really honestly looking forward to in this match. You even got Big E coming out to introduce the New Day beforehand. Nice little nostalgia thing there. This shit worked. It was cool. And the steel cage match with Braun and Shane McMahon. You know you're going to get your yearly Shane McMahon <laughs> YOLO moment. The I'm going to try and literally kill myself at WrestleMania spot. Like this match was infinitely better than I thought it was going to be. Pulling Shane through the frickin' cage, having Shane do the fucking flip off the top, like everybody feels that, everybody believes in that, everybody knows. Like I still would have had Braun throw Shane through the cage and have him win, have Shane win. But, you know, the, you played off of the whole Braun is stu 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 stupid thing by having Shane outsmarting him at different times, like, there was actually storytelling at different points in time in this match and throughout the show that was refreshingly surprising from any wrestling company, especially WWE. So Braun wins, but the match was good enough and he got the big Shane spot. Like, it was passable. I had nothing to really complain about. And then we get to the last two matches. Miz and Morrison versus Bad Bunny and Damian Priest. What we saw tonight, Saturday night, this was fantastic. This set an incredibly high bar for celebrity matches. Imagine being Tony Khan and saying Shaquille O'Neal is the greatest celebrity wrestler of all time, not to mention just on the surface how ridiculous that is, as great as Shaq's match was on Dynamite a few weeks back, because it was. But then you see Bad Bunny here and you're like, holy shit! Like, this gave me D'Angelo Williams at Slammiversary vibes from a couple of years ago. And I certainly hope to hell this isn't the last time we see Bad Bunny work, perform, in a WWE ring. Nothing but props and respects to the guy that sat there and moved to Tampa, worked out at the Performance Center. He cared about this, he was serious about this shit, and it showed. I mean, he's doing frickin' Bunny Destroyers on the frickin' mat outside the ring. Like he was actually selling, they were telling a story in this match, something certainly that the NXT nerds and most of the main roster on both shows could take notes about, could definitely learn from. This match was infinitely better, I think, than most people expected, myself included, and it delivered massively. This was kick-ass. This was a shit ton of fun. And frankly, if you didn't think this match was a shit ton of fun, I don't know what the hell is wrong with you. The whole, well, Damian Priest didn't come out looking like a million bucks. What the hell was it? This is not about that. You associated Damian Priest with Bad Bunny in front of more viewers on Raw the past couple of months. Damian Priest still got a WrestleMania moment here. Damian Priest still got a WrestleMania win in his first go-round. It's not that bad. And fucking frankly, when you look at Bad Bunny, like shit, I'm sure you'll do more work with him in the future. Why the hell wouldn't you? Fantastic. Like, this is a match a lot of people were like, oh, this is going to be kind of cringe and just plug your nose and get through it. And instead, you got something that was really enjoyable. Which to that point also then started to make me concerned about the main event, the SmackDown Women's Championship, Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. Because I'm like, Bobby and Drew delivered. Most of this night has been good, except that women's tag match was complete shit. The last match right before this was outstanding. It's actually a decent bar that these ladies are going to have to meet, step up to the plate, and deliver. And man... Did they ever? I won't go so far as to say this is the greatest women's match I've ever seen or the greatest, one of the greatest WrestleMania matches I've ever seen or one of the greatest WrestleMania main events. I think it's a lot of hyperbole, recency bias, and letting your emotions get you caught up in the moment. But you definitely saw the magnificence of black girl magic here. Let's be clear. Becky Lynch could never 
Never. And Charlotte's overrated, overpushed force ass could never, ever deliver something like this. Are you kidding me? Becky could never do the stuff that Bianca did tonight. Charlotte certainly could not do the stuff Bianca did tonight. Bianca is what the WWE proclaims Charlotte to be, but Bianca actually is. She's like a Lady Lesnar for them. And similar to Lesnar, who debuted right after WrestleMania in 2002, and in his first Royal Rumble in 2003, he won it, then he went on to win the title at Mania in a main event. Here you go. She makes her first appearance on the main roster at WrestleMania last year, wins her first Royal Rumble match. Now you're here at this moment. She's taking on a veteran, an established person like Sasha Banks. And I was really worried, like, are they actually going to go through with this? Are they actually going to do what's best for business? And unlike Charlotte's political selfish ass, Sasha did what was right for business and did the honors here as she should have. And the dynamics between these two ladies during this match were fantastic. From the way that you sold it, like Bianca was this powerhouse, but newer to the scene, a little emotional, having to kind of control herself. Sasha Banks being the veteran, a little more wily, a little craftier, a little smarter, which is the only way this match could possibly work. And they did it to the way they incorporated even Bianca's freaking hair, where it was used both as a weapon for Bianca Belair and a weapon for Sasha Banks. It's like, thank you. You can play off of this for both of them and do several spots involving it, and they did. The timing was good. The setup was good for a lot of this stuff. It told the story throughout, and that finishing sequence was outstanding. All to have the big, big moment and Bianca Belair beating Sasha Banks to become the new SmackDown Women's Champion. This delivered. It certainly delivered. And you could see the star power emanating from Bianca as she won and she held the belt up high. And it was a cool, awesome fucking moment for a lot of fans that whined and pissed and moaned about this. It got Twitter hashtags trending about it. I hope you're happy because this match certainly should have delivered to your expectations tonight. And if you're a Sasha Stan and you want to be all emotional about her losing... No, don't be. She still got one of the main events of WrestleMania this year. She was a part of a classic that people are going to be talking about for years. Infinitely better than that shit at WrestleMania 35, mind you. Like, she, she cool. She good. Like, this is a good thing on her resume. And even props to her for taking that hair whip spot at the end with the big old gash and everything. That shit sounded like fucking gunshots. And it looked like it hurt. And you could sell it like it fucking hurt. I imagine Sasha wouldn't have done that for some random white chick. But she did it for a sister here as she should have. Because the moment called for it. And I find myself now like totally, totally caught off guard, thrown off guard here. Because night one minus one match was really damn good. Now, to those of you that are saying, this was a great WrestleMania, uh, ding dong, dum dicks. This was only night one. You still got a whole another night to go. And you got some potential clunkers lurking on the card. Could come down to our tribal chief having to save night two. Hopefully it doesn't, though. Because night one certainly set a high bar that night two is going to have to be challenged to step up to the standard of and deliver against. It ain't over yet. This was a hell of a start to WrestleMania. That's for damn sure. Now, you could send me your comments below. Tell me what you thought about it, what your highlights, your lowlights were. Like, did they catch you off guard with how good this was? Did you think this sucked? If so, why? Do you want Bad Bunny to wrestle more in the future for WWE? Are you happy that Sasha lost and Bianca won? Like, tell me all that stuff. And make sure if it's your first time checking me out, you smash that subscribe button and follow me on Twitter. That's what you do. And yes, for those of you that are wondering, I didn't do it last year because I didn't want to, but this year I'll be back for night two to give you another review. Yeah, we're going to review both nights worth of shows. But night one, excuse me, night one was great. I enjoyed the hell out of it. 
Maybe wanna sing in the rain.